into the game and it is Spo versus Synthetic. And Spo is starting with the Mage. Okay, so Spo looks like Freeze Mage. I'm actually not there yet. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, Spo has Freeze Mage by looks of things, and uh, and Synthetic has his That's... Tempo Mage. Uh, just give me a second while I catch you up, sir. No problem. So, Spo's uh, got the double arcane intellect quite early on, which is actually not too terrible. Um, it's always a little bit scary not to have, say, something like a Frostbolt versus Temple Mage early on, as um, you do want the answers to just try and, um, you know, not let the Temple Mage run away with the game too early. But uh, having two intellect means he can at least uh, get some cycle on and, you know, really start to uh, delve into his deck for the uh, for the answers he needs here. He does have the Frost Nova. He's probably hoping he can draw into a Doomsday in time for turn five, and as I say that the arcane intellect does pull straight into Doomsayer, so it's looking like he's doing pretty okay so far. Yeah, this hand looks like it's got a bit of everything, which is just what you want. You've got the card draw to get yourself established early, you have the mid game freeze, and then all he has to do is start drawing into his um, damage spells to finish the game off. And of course, he's got enough card draw to give him a chance, so it's looking good for Spo here. But you know, it's easy to say that, but the, the tempo mage doesn't isn't slow it does put pressure on you pretty rapidly so nothing certain at all especially if Spo starts missing on these draws yeah but there's a screw jank clunker which is give a friendly mech 2-2 two -two, and considering he does have a mech on the board uh that's pretty interesting <laughs> yeah i suppose not going to be impressed with this one mana thing that turns yetis into killing machines um yeah kind of weird that i think like there's potential that the clunker and the arcane intellect come down actually because you you don't want to overcommit onto turn five, um. So maybe that's why he's holding. It. I just don't know if I like Flame Waker because this board on its own now is fairly threatening, and the Mana Worm doesn't really. Spell hasn't got like a Frostbolt for the Mana Worm, right? Because he would have used it, you'd imagine. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fairly safe to just play Intellect this turn and keep pushing damage. You're pushing for that now eight. Um, which is going to be pretty nice. The Clunker does come down to put even more of a threat on, and this is a very, very fast start from Synthetic. Yeah, it's 10 damage on turn 4, and the thing about the Flame Waker that he was considering, I think, is if you get it down early, you don't run the risk of pinging things like Loot Hoarders and Acolytes yeah. to give them the extra tempo, but... Flame he, he Waker, went with the... double arcane missiles. <laughs> you definitely do it, right? There's no, there's no world in which you don't play that. Surely... Uh... How many shots would that give you? That'll give you six, eight, ten shots to do seven, and if they miss, you're doing a load of damage to face. You've got to consider it, haven't you? Because he still has a reasonable follow-up as well. You know, it's not like that's his whole hand. And um, he can, uh, um, yeah, I mean, oh, he's playing safe. You realise he's got the Aedis here, and he gets the spare part from his clockwork now. As oh, well. I know, I know what he's doing as well. Yeah, I think he might just want to uh, see if his opponent has heal, and if he doesn't, just put all this to face because he gets two parts now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now, now he can go Flame Waker, Apprentice, and cast all of his spells, which is what yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, which is fourteen, which is lethal. <laughs> what? And what is this yes, game? Just crazy. Okay, so let's and see if Spo plays around Aidus this. The Dark Bane just does six damage to face with the two spare parts as well. It's just absolutely Ooh, nuts. This is crazy. Both secrets, but he doesn't have to prop the barrier. He doesn't have to proc the barrier to get the damage through. That's Yeah, you can proc the uh, ice block without hitting barrier and then just ping next turn, right? Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to attack a game with this hand. This hand's full of damage. Yeah, this is actually like one of the craziest it's... games I've seen in a long time. Well, I have counted this right, like because I tend to try and not do maths on stream, uh, but I'm pretty three, sure six, this is 14. Six. I make it 12, but I'm... I... I'm really bad at counting. Yeah, it's 14. Yeah, it's 14 okay. from the two uh, things, yeah. yeah. And he can even... Um, stealth his guy, just stealth the three. You have to stealth the 3-2, because if you stealth the Flame Waker, it comes out when it attacks, with the two yeah. attacks. So you stealth the 3-2, and now demand AoE, or, or... Well, it demands a heal, more than anything, or another Ice Block, because you can just ping your opponent now. This and is a heal insane. is pretty much no use. Uh, a heal... Okay, it buys you a turn, but... Then you're just in the same position anyway. Well, I think a, a heal to nine forces the attack, which then procs the ice block, uh, ice barrier. So then heals for another eight. Yep. So I think heal like a a, a heal bot would be okay and uh, keep him going. But I mean, this is just game, right? 
Um, he's gonna have to do that thing Unless where you can yeah. your own stuff. But what can he draw? Oh. And well, the other ice block is the only out, right? And then he has to draw the heal about the following turn. Yeah. There we go. I we, mean, we wow. Didn't even get to see the card on our um, observer mode. There, he just didn't get what he needed, and that's one nil. So uh, yeah, that that was the game, guys. Um, that was pretty pretty nuts, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> don't we know what to say about that match? When you can uh, draw those. Um, those spare parts and have that much burst, fourteen on or whatever the hell turn was that turn six, um, yeah. that was pretty insane. So I suppose freeze mage uh, lost that game and synthetics tempo mage is off the board for him now. He has his warlock and his paladin left to do something against suppose warlock paladin and his freeze mage. Yeah, and some pretty good cast of math there from you, sir. Well worked out. Okay. Um, I play a bit of tempo yeah. mage, so you know my math should be. Reasonable, I suppose. He's got decent synergy off the portal <laughs> to get the extra two damage on the Yeti as well. Um, everything just sort of aligned really nicely for him there, and he played it perfectly to to get the damage through. As we see him go with his Warlock and Spove recuing the Mage. Yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable to recue the Freeze Mage. I mean, the you know the the deck's going to be pretty good. It is versus Synthetic's Zoo, so again. Um, the zoo can get a quick start, and I think one of the uh, ways he can pressure is maybe if he plays. Uh, we didn't see Void Terror. Synthetics playing the uh, the Gormok Zoo, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. so that um, well, do you think he runs Mount? Uh, not Mountain Giants, Sea Giants potentially. Um, probably Sea Giant, or po and possibly even the the wire, the five five for one. That I always forget the name of Rilegui, whatever Seeker, she's called. Seeker, yeah. Seeker. Um, could be those in there. And there, there could be. Obviously, there's direct damage in the form of Gormot. There could be uh, quite a few things. Obviously, there'll be eggs, which is always a pain for the Freeze Mage to play around. As they have to tiptoe around with their blizzards and stuff. So, interesting to see how it goes. The synthetic's got a pretty tidy looking opening hand here. Yeah, it's definitely not too bad. The damage to face just isn't really an issue because at the point where the freeze mage has the yeah uh, or will have the damage to burst you down, then it just doesn't matter. The zoo has already lost at that point, and um, once your health starts getting a bit scary, uh, so the imp is probably now gonna well the second imp is probably gonna be played along with the void walker, and uh, it's gonna be pretty nice. It's probably gonna eat a ping. From Spo, unless he wants to drop that Doomsday down, but to drop the Doomsday down, you just heal for seven. Effectively, it doesn't actually kill, uh, clear the board. Yeah, so you you play the Doomsday and he kills it, or you just you know do this and take another six. You have got the heal bottles back up um, in a few turns time. Um, I can't like pain's awkward here though. You won't be able to get a card off it very easily. So synthetic will be happy with his start. The thing is with Zoo. It's hard not to get a good start against Freeze Mage. The problem comes in the middle when the Freeze Mage starts freezing your guys repeatedly. Yeah, it's definitely going to be... Um, I mean, already now, the, the issue is... You, it's a weird dynamic, actually. So, like, Zoo has to now start tapping almost every turn to keep up the pressure. But the more he taps, the more the, the easier it will be for Spo to the, if he stabilizes just for a turn to then potentially just kill the zoo because there's no heal in this deck yeah and it's a bit strange as well because you spend the two mana on the tap on, as well as the life and every time you spend that two mana on a tap it's great you get a card but then that's two mana of stuff you're not pressuring your opponent with that turn so it's an investment but you haven't got long to invest because you know freeze may start doing the freezy thing on about turn six and you need to get a lot of the damage in before that if you possibly can yeah, Direwolf coming down. Is, are we going to see... Um, whoops, sorry about that, guys, with the mouse. Uh, the Direwolf to three. I mean, you'll have to Power Overwhelm in the gang boss. So this was a really nice Ice Lance from Spo, actually. Because Power Overwhelm... If it was the other way around, Power Overwhelm in the, uh, the Flame Imp, even though it would only require uh, Abusive instead. But either way, like, it feels fine. But Power Overwhelm in the, uh, the gang boss feels horrible because you gain nothing from it except to clear the uh, zero seven, 7 And your board's not big enough to make that kind of investment. Yeah, Synthetic deciding it just wasn't worth the effort. Put in the tap while you can. Um, take the time to just do that. And it did get a lower Theb, which is, obviously, we've talked about that earlier, a, a really key card to give decks a chance of beating Freeze Mage. Especially a deck, you know, this matchup in particular, where the Freeze Mage pretty much locks you down around the Alex Raza turn. 
Yeah, and he's going to drop the juggler now. Um, the juggler is a weird thing. Like you do just drop it. You don't really care about the uh, the freeze mage card draw because normally you play around, you know, like trying to kill that acolyte in one hit or something. But playing the zoo deck here, you need to just hurry up and win the game. So I think you just have to just drop everything here. I don't even. It's a tough one. Uh, oh, he's going to tap. I didn't mind the the wolf and the juggler just to put something on the board because he can't blizzard this turn. And he's used one Doomsayer, so like, you know, the the likelihood of Frost Nova Doomsayer feels pretty, you know, he's pretty low. Yeah, he, he grabbed the Wolf, and I, I think maybe because he'd played the Juggler, maybe he did just change his mind and not want to give them the card. Um, uh, maybe, I don't, I'm not sure, because what you say makes sense, he's still going to do this here anyway, so. Maybe he just felt his hand size was getting too small. Yeah, and uh, double... Double Blizzard from Spo though. If there's anything that's going to slow this game down for Spo, it's definitely Double Blizzard. Especially because that card actually clears up a lot of the Zoo minions as well. So it's not just actually just freezing them and slowing them down like it would against something, say, like like a Druid, for example. Um, but a lot of the minions, as we can see, are actually pretty low health. And Double Blizzard just slows it down so much. And that's Gormok just played as a 4-4. Yep. Um, he does have a lot of burst potential if things fall his way, but first of all, he's got to get something to actually stick on the board and be able to attack. And at the moment, that's looking a long way off. And 23 life, and there's the Alex Strauss as well. For one of the things that can go wrong is you run out of stuff before you get the Alex, and that's not going to go wrong now either. Although it's not going to be really needed on 19. Let's face it. Yeah, I think um, just playing Blizzard here is fine. I think like Blizzard, Blizzard again. You know, like maybe yeah. uh then play the intellect and something later on. Like, they, I think supposing just no rush here. I mean, there's a lot of uh, pressure in Synthetic's hand in terms of, like, the Lotheb effectively buys a turn. But you'll probably want to play at Lotheb either pretty soon or much later on. And the problem is there might not be a later on against Freeze Mage when you sat on 19 health without tapping this turn. Yeah, and as you called right at the start, one of the problems Synthetic, Synthetic is running into now is 19 is okay, but if it goes any lower, he's going to start having to worry about you know, forget Dying. the freeze mage doing comboing <laughs> stuff. He might just die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a pretty reasonable turn, though. You get the one damage from the juggler, and at this point, especially being the aggressor in this uh, matchup, every damage helps. Um, and puts some, a lot, of, you know, a lot of beef on the board, really. And the, the second blizzard isn't going to come down this turn, but the heal bot into ping seems pretty okay. Um, maybe even playing the Lotheb just in case you draw into flame strike. Uh, because I think pinging everything else just doesn't really do too much. And also it baits. It like it pretty much bluffs the Flame Strike if he chose to ping into Lothab. So maybe that would affect Synthetic's play. But he has gone to ping face instead. And that's pretty reasonable considering you have so much burst on, uh, in hand. Sorry. Yeah, and the, the heal bot's actually important. I think with some quick caster math that it was 23 damage. Um, which would have actually procced the block the other way. And so the heal bot stopped that from all happening. And now you can't just slouch about and keep all this burst back. You've got to do something. Um, he might lead with a peddler to see what he can get, but he probably is too slow if he does that. Uh, he he knows that this is his turn. He's got to do a lot of damage because last turn he, he stopped blizzards and flame strikes. And now he knows they're back on the table again. Yeah, and he's valuing this juggler quite highly as well in the extra. Oh, oh this isn't. Surely, surely the Doom Guard doesn't feel good here. Yeah, you've got a peddler first, right? Just because it might be junk that you want to have a chance of discarding. As it happens, he's now got a decision to make because he can do so much damage. I mean, yeah, I think that's probably changed his mind. No. Nope. Well, he, the thing here is, I think Doomguard does the most instant damage, and with the three cards he has, all of those cards are uh, almost all damage from hand. The abusive sergeant obviously requires a minion on board to buff, but like you know. The, uh, the Power of Wellman is plus 4 damage, the Soul Fire is plus 4 damage, so, you know, you get the Doom Guard on, push, and you still almost certainly keep a, an extra damage card that you can uh, use in the following turn. This, yeah. now, without the Lothab effect, the Blizzard comes down on turn 8, and this is just looking progressively more scary for uh, Synthetic. There's not really an out... Uh, Devendra Vargas doesn't do anything at the moment because the extra damage um, isn't going to happen until next turn. And also, Freeze Mage doesn't care about taunts. No, and he's got a lot of damage now. He's just going to launch things at face. Um, set up the barrier because there's not enough damage. I don't know. He's well, he, he's just setting up lethal now and then. It just doesn't turn. matter because he power blasts next turn and wins. So um, all he's done is put him to ten. The 
I mean, I guess Malganis is a card, but he has like Fireball Frostbolt for that, and then just Pyros yeah. the turn after. Um, so like, suppose just safe. The, this game's over, and uh, suppose gonna uh, maybe get some justice for that previous match where it went a, a little bit grim for him, I think. So yeah, that'd be one one and. Interesting to see, like Synthetic had a lot of bursts, and this is how hard this matchup is if the Freeze Mage does get its control, like the the Blizzards in particular. And you know, Synthetic did all he could, he played around Flame Strike, he did set up a big board, but it's not quite going to get in there. And we're going to end up with um, Paladins, <laughs> and Paladins is a very good possibility for the next game. Is that also the next expansion? It was like Goblins and Gnomes, the next expansion is Paladins and Paladins. That was this expansion, right? That's what we're playing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, so there's the win. It's now one all, and uh, both both guys have. Uh, I mean, there's still the uh, what? What's left? It's warlock, warlock, paladin, paladin, right? Yeah, they both banned druid. They both won with mage, and now it's warlock and paladin wars. Um, and it will depend on what their warlocks are. We know that synthetics is zoo. And it's the the flood zoo variety where he just sticks things on the board and you know goes crazy. We haven't seen a sea giant, so it could be a tiny bit slower than that. And we don't know what Spose is, but we're about to find out. Alright, it looks like Reno. Looks like more Reno. In a pretty highly picked deck in this tournament, actually. Yeah, and there's the uh, the Malganis as well. So um, we know it's that sort of leans towards that variant. It might have a you know the Void Caller and maybe even a Doom Guard in there, um, just because the, the the Void Caller value is pretty 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 reasonable. I've heard. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a meme, but this match really, like, if the Reno draws well, it's going to be really difficult for Synthetic to get through. And if the Reno draws badly, then it's really difficult for the Reno to win. And uh, we can see that he's got the one, two, three curve. The Demon Wrath will be pretty nice for him on curve. By then he'll have two more cards in hand, which will probably fill out the curve some more. Um, on synthetic side, he has got a load of the stuff that gives him a really fast start. So this is going to be a pretty brutal encounter. Yeah, we're probably going to see the trade from Spo here, and uh, I think I'll just drop the Swamp Poos, I guess. Or do you, do you feel comfortable tapping early with this trade? Uh. I'm happy to do that. I think I'd probably tap. I don't think I need to get the board. I don't know, though. My my zoo opponent chose not to coin on turn one. And that's got to set an alarm bell off for the imp gang boss. So maybe he'll feel he needs something down. Maybe he'll feel these don't challenge it, so he wants to tap anyway. Yeah, and one of the nuances of this uh, matchup is that Demon Wrath can potentially not do a lot. Um, versus the zoo deck because they play obviously a lot of demons and uh, it doesn't affect them. So it's uh, demon wrath feels a bit weird. He probably much prefer to see a hellfire in that in that slot instead of demon wrath. Yeah, there's so many demons in the zoo deck that it's is pretty awkward. And as we see now, it's not going to do anything against this boss. And actually, his hand doesn't do anything against this boss in particular. So yeah, he's going to have to keep tapping to try and to tap into Reno, tap into better removal, as you said, maybe hellfire for when the other stuff comes and the egg's going to make it really difficult for all these things to happen yeah I mean at least he has an antique healbot right so the healbot makes uh, or gives Spo the opportunity to actually continue tapping to be honest there's nothing else for it he can play the swamp ooze just to play it because um, it's probably not going to do much else uh, but I would definitely like to just see another tap here and you, the, the way this matchup will go now is he'll tap into something like you know, like game breaking, I guess, either the Reno or um, or even potentially uh, like a Sludge Belcher or something like that, which will really slow the Zoo player down. Yeah, he needs to be a little bit careful with relying on Reno, though, because um, you alluded to it earlier. If the Zoo just has 14 damage on board, then healing for 14 doesn't really help you that much. Uh, this brand looks like at some point it could do some really serious work with Dr. Boom already. Healbot, if he can hold out that long. And he's just choosing to challenge the board very, very slowly here. Yeah, and I think uh, the Shadow Flame could be very nice as well. Even if it's just like Swampu Shadow Flame, you know, to just like clear clear some of the smaller stuff off the board. If the, if that you know that option presents itself to spell. Yes, and his hand's looking clunky, but as you say, Healbot into you know, another, another card by then. He'll have a lot of options that he currently hasn't got because of all the heavy stuff in his hand and all the like all the tech cards really that he's got. 
Um, but he's still 22. There's uh, synthetics probably going to have to clear up this two three. Yeah. So the life total's still holding in there, and suppose hand size Ooh. is getting bigger and bigger. That's a good draw. That just Lothab stops anything too crazy in the form of uh, the power over the uh, power the overwhelming power overwhelming happening um, on the egg to help clear up uh, the Lothab and obviously generate the four four. Um, you'll probably want to keep the egg anyway though due to AOE. But every single turn that Spo plays here that sort of keeps him relatively safe means that he can get to that brand antique heal bot and then you know into like you know twisting there that he has shadow flame dr boom so those like late game impact four cards yeah and things like malgarnis if you do start tidying up with twisting nether and put a malgarnis down later than that um suddenly the zoo deck it doesn't do a whole lot of damage from hand it does because it's got power overwhelming and that sort of thing but if it hasn't got things to put the power overwhelming on because it's just been twisting nethered, it gets really difficult to deal with something like a Malganis. And even though it will eventually deal with it, it, buy, it will just buy um, the Reno Lock even more time. Yeah, and with that much damage and the low theb effect from Synthetic coming down, Spo was forced into the heal bot there, really. It obviously, it would have been nice to hold off two more turns, but it just wouldn't be realistic with the hand he has. Um, so the heal bot's just healed for 8 there. Puts a decent body on the board. The 3-3 three, is actually pretty decent versus Zoo. Can do some work, whereas, you know, versus some of the more, say, mid-range decks, the, um, you know, maybe the 3-3 three, is more of an afterthought than anything else. Um, the mini, uh, the heal bot does go down, though, and there's the power of Omen onto the egg to clear up the low theb. So now, this is the turn for Synthetic, where it's like, right, what do you do? Because Reno only heals for 15 and he has that much damage near his damage um, on the board already. So the heal does nothing except put a 4-6 on, uh, on the board and like resets the turn, I suppose. Yeah, really difficult for Spo here. He's he's not got a very obvious looking clear at all. And he's still got a handful of situational cards, even this late, to be fair. Um, maybe you peddler and try and get power overwhelming and then shadow flame all that. That's an option. Maybe you're that desperate that you would need to do that. I think he might have to, because everything else, like, Dart Bomb kills a 2-3. Awesome. He could Dart Bomb the Lotheb and Demon Fire to take 5 off the board. Uh, what else? But does that, that buys you one turn. And like you've said, like playing for one more turn just to top deck Reno isn't really an option. Um, and taking 5 off the board does play into the Nether, but then you know that Zoo's just going to put a load of stuff back down straight after the Nether. Let's see what comes out so of the He's going for... The play that I was thinking, where he's trying to get power overwhelming, um, but this will clear some stuff, just not there. Yeah. So, yeah, what's his play here? That dark bomb, soul fire. Yeah. And so oh, now we're probably going to see a peddler from synthetic, see if we can get power overwhelming. It won't be quite. Oh, hang on. So that's what seven, what, ten. He? Oh, it'll be one off if he gets the power overwhelming. One off, off which is just inviting Reno to be top decked, right? Yeah. Um, he, he doesn't know whether Spo has Reno or not. Spo wouldn't have played Reno there if he had it. So he's still got to play. Putting your opponent to one when you don't know if they've got Reno isn't the, necessarily the option you want to take. And he's going to see what he gets off his implosion. Two, because that's all implosion ever does. And now he's just got to decide whether he wants to kill the two, two. He's seen the Shadow Flame gone, so he might just choose to ignore this and go face. Yeah, I think he, don't need, he doesn't really need to kill the two, two here. The only reason he might do it is because it still makes Reno awkward. Like, I mean, look, look, it's the same style board as the previous turn. Because, yeah. um, like, he does heal for 20, but he can do so much more. So Twisted Nether comes in. I love that card and the animations. By far the best animation in the game. Um, and it resets the board, and it's how quickly Synthetic can, like, build this back up. And Bran into Peddler is definitely yeah. a good way to refill your hand and put a lot of pressure on. There's one power overwhelming insta locked, and... Okay, maybe less crazy. Um, uh, do you Dragon just... Egg's kind of good here, I think. Yeah, just for the AoE, I guess. Yeah, I don't think he needs a four life. And then he's got the... Um, if somehow Bran survives, he would have double Dark Iron Dwarf next turn. Is he turn. thinking of taking the Murloc just for troll? Um... I mean, I mean all three of these are options, right? But I don't think you take the Murloc. I, th I, think I think the, the Dragon Doctor... re the reasonable one because you can peel that and trade <laughs> worst case scenario. Oh, he takes the, uh, the the old Voodoo Doctor. He wants that 2-1. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a 2 1, and you know, the 4 life does give you more tap potential, but interesting. So, Spo here has the brand, but not a great deal to do with it at the moment, although, you know, four boom bots is a terrifying prospect next turn. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, that, that, uh, oh my god, what's the word? The AoE clear that Spo just played that's just gone straight out of my mind, the Demon Wrath, that's the one, yeah. um, has actually finally done some work. He's had that card in his hand pretty much all game. Yeah, all game. Uh, and, uh, and it's finally killed some minions that aren't demons, which is always nice. Um, the brand on the board, kind of a tough one. He can easily kill the the, uh, the Belch. It's whether he wants to throw Bran away to do that, but I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, so, yeah, you can throw Bran away. He's probably just checking there isn't some combination of things that gets this Bran through, because Dark Iron Dwarf and Abusive in your hand with Bran is, like, all sorts of damage. Yeah, I uh, think I like the, the Abusive and then Implosion on the 1-2. Yeah, uh, he's seen Shadow Flame. He's seen the Demon Wrath go. Is there anything else that's missing? The Hellfire is the only one he hasn't seen. Is that yeah. right? It's interesting, Nether. So he's not going to be scared of putting a board full of things up. But Yeah, this is interesting, because he could have cleared the board... That's all I. Uh, that's all I would like to do here, because the implosion killing off the one two. It's a guaranteed kill, even if you roll low. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I think he's probably just playing around Hellfire. To be honest, it would make sense that he. He probably thinks he's still in front at this point, and uh, Hellfire would be a disaster. And now he's got to deal with this, which he should be able to do pretty easily. He has easily. juggler implosion that will roll for four and kill the Malganus. So yeah, mad. that's how it works. We've all seen these implosions happen. Oh, he rolled for two. I jinxed it. I'm sorry. Again, that's twice. But this is doable. Uh, yeah, he's got enough stuff to deal with. It. It's just um, going to make him commit more than he wants. Ooh, but he actually, juggler, committing though. more than he wants here is probably fine because we can see that Spo has no way of dealing with his committing. And he's just gone straight into Doom Guard, so you know that's always a reasonable card when you have a power overwhelming a Doom Guard. Um, and there's no real way out for Spo. He has to tap. Um, I think you can't to, rely on yeah. the Warlock not being able to tap into two damage. Well, you know he's still got a one drop in his hand that he took from the Peddler as well. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's really a Sergeant power overwhelming. You know, Soulfire. The the. The odds on him not having two damage are so high, uh, so low. Sorry, so that he, I think he just has to tap Farino and just hope. Yeah, I, I think agree. that's the only way. And the problem is, suppose actually only just halfway through his deck with thirteen cards left in uh, in there. Yeah. Hellfire is an out as far as he's concerned as well. No, uh, Gang Boss is not Reno, and that's going to be game. Two one to synthetic. Yeah, that's right. And now it's the uh, the Paladin Wars. Paladin, we have the same discussion again, what we think about Paladin versus Reno. And we're going to find out what Spo thinks, because he's probably going to play the one he thinks is more favoured. So we know that Paladin versus Paladin is going to be 50-50. So if he plays the Reno deck, it's likely to imply that he thinks he's favoured against Paladin. And I think what happens with this matchup is whichever one you play on a regular basis you think is the favourite. Uh, yeah. Um, what's, what is a question I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give to you, Lauren, here? The past two days of casting Reno decks, have we seen Reno be played? I can't, um, has it happened? I can't remember it. I can't remember seeing a single I Reno. I think we saw one played Desperation on the very first match, but I wouldn't like to swear to that. Okay, I'm definitely going to uh, check he, that No, out. he definitely didn't. He didn't draw it. We, we called it all match and he didn't draw his Reno. Yeah, uh, I don't think we've see, like, seen a Reno played in this whole tournament. Did one get played against Blackout's patron yesterday, maybe? And May it just oh, matter. maybe it did. Anyway, and it just didn't matter because he's hitting you for a million. Anyway, yeah, anyway, let's get back into this game. So, it is the arena lot versus the secret paladin? Uh, the first secret that popped up was Avenge, and pretty good to follow that up with a creeper and then into muster because it pretty much guarantees that you're going to get an Avenge proc. Yeah, and the Reno getting the curve that it wants here, though. Um, important that you curve out against Paladin with your, your good stuff, and he's got a lot of his good stuff, he's got the Dread Infernal and all that thing going on, so um, he should probably be favourite here, although again, this match develops in really strange ways sometimes. The Dread Infernal is pretty interesting um, much more uh, demon focused by looks things, which should be pretty nice, um, although what's what's kind of weird about the Dread Infernal obviously getting a 6-6 six, six from the Void Call is good, but the one damage actually might be pretty nice against Paladin. Yes. 
Um, it's kind of a no-lose situation, though. Right? If you get the 6-6 six, six and you don't do the one damage, it's like, oh, at least I got a 6-6. Six, six. But, yeah, I think you're right. He might just want to use this to, to kill all the things off. Um, what do you think about implosion here? Is it too slow? Hmm... It's a tough one. I think you might want to try and run the Void Collar in first. Because you might want to uh, uh, Owl Sunfury, for example. Mm -hmm. I like if that. If it's Draxus, which it is. Um, and so... The, ooh, ooh, Juggler. Ooh, now there's like multiple Owl targets. Um, but like, Secret Paladin doesn't normally run Equality. And rarely runs Owl. Some people do run an Owl, but not too common. So, the 315... Um, taunted yeah. up is going to be pretty ruthless and at this stage of the tournament Spo will know if there's an equality or not and I would be pretty sure there's not we've seen Synthetic's deck, we didn't see an equality and he went pretty deep with it so the chances are that um, Spo knows exactly what he's up against here and so he's going to be in a good position when he taunts up this 315 Oh, or when he uh, kills the 1-1 one -one and help us it's pretty pretty reasonable. You're not you're not too bothered about three damage when it's on a Draxus. <laughs> uh, and now he has like next turn he's he has heal bot. If he wants it, he could like swamp who's torn up. He definitely has a lot of options. Because of that mysterious challenger come down though. Oh. Never mind. Do we just see Reno this turn? Or do you think he can get it do you think he's gonna be a bit risky and try and get away with a like a taunt? And then pass and get a bigger Reno or uh, potentially a Heelbot brand and go for the really late game. So, if you Reno, you gain 18 and you take a bunch. If you heal what first? <sighs> I think he'll probably wait. But he needs to heal what? Which means. Nah. This is fine. Yeah, he's got to do that just to make sure every point of damage is gone, though, right? Um, because then six, and the most you can expect a paladin to do is four from their hand in the real world. Um, they can do more. They can have um, cog hammer and blessing, and with competitive spirit that would be seven. But then you've got to get through the taunts, which you can't do. So this is fine. Yeah, this is pretty nice. He's going to get a lot of value from the Reno. Um, he can Reno, but the the issue there, and it's the it's it's one of the issues you have in a matchup like this. Like he does have a board which is good. But, you know, uh, Synthetic has the 7-7 seven, seven taunt and the 4-3 now and the weapon. And he can only Reno this turn. And now, okay, Zombie Chow. But you do go back up to full health. But do you actually gain enough? That's the problem. So he kills off the 7-7, seven, seven, drops the Reno, drops the Chow. And then I guess just hopes that Synthetic can't, like, build the board back up again. Yep, sometimes Secret Paladin just runs out of big guys. At this point, Synthetic doesn't look like that's going to happen. He's got a choice between... Tyrion or Juggler Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, I think uh, Tyrion's too good here. Oh, is he not going to go for it? I like uh, the Shredder into the 2-3 and then Tyrion. There's no nice way for it to get killed, I suppose. Yeah, I think I think this is okay, though. It just puts a big guy on the... It draws, like, the Siphon Soul or something like that out. And then... Or you know, any other of the removal spells that do things. And then you get to play your Tyrion because Spo would have to use his move. And you're testing as well. If Spo doesn't kill this 6-6, six, six, you know that Tyrion can just be played however you like. Yeah, and this is a... I mean, Spo's now got a combo I really like, which is Brand Defender of Argus. It feels so good. It's so... Like, plus 2-2 two, two on two minions and taunt. It's so nice. Whether that's going to be enough to uh, to stall it out, I don't know. Maybe he just taps at this point. It's kind of... Kind of a rough position. Spo definitely needs like one more board clear, and he's probably going to feel pretty safe. Yeah, you can also choose just to defend the zombie chow and protect the brand slot. It doesn't work, so but you could choose to do that. Um, yeah, it'd be four six and four four. The problem being, you want to know how greedy to be with your brand and your heal bot, right? So, and how you're going to get back into it as well. So I think he probably has to tap here somehow. Yeah, I think tap is, is pretty okay. I think I guess you attack him first, right? Do you not want to attack him and uh, see what happens? Mm, why not attack at all? Yeah, I think this is okay. Um, because you've got Bran Healbot to build it all back up one more time. That's true. This sort of almost guarantees full value from the Healbot because you're probably going to get pushed pretty hard. And 
if he can stabilize, like what he's looking at, he'll be thinking, well, if I can just stabilize now, I've got this. But from Synthetic's point of view, he's got the Tyrion, he's got the Lothar, and he's thinking, well, yeah, I don't think Spo can stabilize here unless he gets AoE. So you might see some of these one toughness guys traded into soon, or they just start going face crazily. Uh, it's quite a difficult turn. Because if he goes face and gets a coin, that's actually also another thing that's really relevant here. Yeah, it's kind of a, one of these odd interactions we see from the uh, pilot Shredder being a card, where you can get some of these um, weird two drops that you don't normally see in games, but have like very odd effects. Uh, wow, nice juggle. Doesn't even have to run the weapon in. Is there value yeah. in killing the 6-6? Six, six? That's my question. I don't think there's much when your opponent... You've got noble, it's noble Sacrifice, right? So you don't have to worry about it this turn, at least. Uh, I think you can just let him run into the Noble Sacrifice. I don't play any charge minions unless, you know, Juraxes, which he's not going to play, so... Yeah. I think you can... He, he has decided to take it down. I think you could have just gone face. Yeah, I think the the idea is that the 6-6 six, six doesn't die to the Noble Sacrifice, and then it's just going to be an issue next turn. And what this does is, um... The Noble Sacrifice could have been propped on the 6-6. Six, six. That would obviously have been fine for Synthetic. But now it's like... suppose like, right... That minion died, I need to play another minion, then attack and prop the Noble yeah. Sack, then I can do something, you know. So this just, like, delays it even more and makes it even harder to just, you know, really, like, pull the game back. Yeah, and um, six mana mortal coils aren't quite as good as one mana mortal coils either. And you're, you're dead right, of course, that um, Synthetic's in control of which minion this secret hits, at least in the foreseeable future. And to be honest, the foreseeable future is all that's left of this game if Synthetic wins it. So, because uh, he's only got like two turn lethal. And yeah, Spo realizing that if he plays the BGH, it can't actually get through the secret. So, that emphasizes how good that trade was last turn. Yeah, and I think Redemption. Oh, again, this is really. Oh, is he going to coin? I yeah, guess he's, he's going to coin, coin out Redemption. Redemption. Yeah, because it's going to be crazy. This is kind of weird, though. Maybe you don't play Redemption. I don't think you do because you get down as a card, right? Do you not want Redemption on Tyrion? Um, but you're going to get Redemption Tyrion, or you're going to... What, what are you fearing? Uh, like, uh, well, it, it's a tough one, yeah. So if, like, Siphon Soul comes out on Tyrion, which it probably won't do, actually, because all it does is give him a weapon and there's damage there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, And that is lethal, regardless. But in terms of if there, if there was a minion down that, that comes down and get, it gets a bit sticky, you know, if we see, like, Bran... Uh, right. Peddler Argus or something, you know, and then the attack goes in, the 2-1 dies, but I suppose if that happens, then you gain a juggle and Tyrion's still alive anyway, right? Yeah, and because you get the Divine Shield back as well, I think, it just means you've got to kill the guy four times. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ashbringer aside, you've, you've still got to kill this guy. And this looks good. Or at well, least it looks okay. Looks okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least it <laughs> saves okay. a bit more time. I mean, what what are you thinking, Bran, uh, Molten, Argus? Yeah, I think and then Dart Bomb the mana. Dart Bomb the Juggler. I think you have to, right? I think you have to. It's not that nice well, at all. It I just guess, looks good. I guess you either Dart Bomb the Juggler or Dart Bomb the Divine Shield, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. And I don't see. I mean, you've got to get the Giant down. You've got to get the giant down because that challenges Tyrion. I guess you've got to dart bomb something because you've worked out what the secret is. You might need to dart bomb the shield because the problem is like the shield suddenly is worth six instead of. Uh... Do you buff both or do you buff one? I think you have to buff both. You you you, you have no choice uh, because the molten giant dies right. Like, mm -hmm. it just dies. So where's the dive I'm going to go? It does go on the shield. So uh, Spo agreeing with me on that one, which is always nice. Um, because otherwise, like, the juggle's frustrating. But how many juggles is he going to get? Like, two max? Because he has a coin, yeah. one creature... Well, potentially one creature in hand, and then hero power. Whereas Tyrion hitting for six and taking zero damage? <laughs> it's kind of rough. Whereas at least now, if Tyrion runs in, it dies. If it runs into the Molten. Yeah, I don't think he runs it into the Molten because of that redemption. I think he'll try and get the Ashbringer and another Tyrion. Um, which means he'll probably sacrifice off the smaller guys. I imagine he should be... No, nope, you're right. He's going to actually just get rid of it this way. That's fair enough. Uh, but that does, of course, mean that things are harder. Is he going to eat 10? Can't eat 10, right? 
Uh, I think he can. His opponent's on one card and on 11 health, and you have I think he's just running him. the juggler now, right? Oh, he's going to desperately try to hit something, though. Yeah, he wanted to hit the Bran, I think, so he could only have to eat fire, uh, four. Or hit the Molten Giant so that the, the Cut Purse would get through. But yeah, this is fine. Poor. But with Bran gone, obviously the heal bot's much, much worse. And... That was about as good a turn as it could have been for Spell, and it's still not good enough, I don't think. Yep, so just to go over the secrets, it's still Noble Sacrifice and Redemption. Uh, so the Argus is going to come in, uh, prop those secrets. Spo then has a heal for a total of 11. Um, and he can tap, I guess. So we go to 16. He can tap to 14. There's the Ashbringer. And there's only 12 on board. So you know what? The tap I don't actually mind. Yeah. And I think he has to do something. Four one Twilight Drakes, man. Yeah. And the thingy, he, uh, he might well run Jaraxxus. And if he runs Jaraxxus, then maybe this game isn't over. Sludge Belch is a hell of a top deck there, though. Um, it's going to allow these guys just to you know, synthetic to calculate how much face he needs to do and if he can afford to trade or if he just wants to go face. It's, it's all up to how he feels at this point in terms of... He can get loads of damage in. He can't quite get lethal, so he might as well kill something off because... Um, that way the Sludge Belcher will protect the rest well, of his army. I don't so, know. He, doesn't pro he probably doesn't really need to because he has... Um, he has the, uh, the get down and the redemption. So with the get yeah. down, that's like what the sludge belcher and the get down soak up like three to four attacks to clear completely. This stops the tap, putting him to two stops the yeah. tap. So you're right. He now can't even tap his way out of trouble, and that's game. And, there and we that's go. synthetic through to the final, three to one against Spo. Yeah, pretty crazy. Like not not too um not expected result to be honest. But also we've cast a lot of synthetic this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been playing really well, really solid, and just taking some just overall strong decks. Obviously, he's got the secret piled in. He played the Tempo Mage in the zoo, um, and then it seems that his uh, his druid just gets banned every single uh, every single yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, and he's now guaranteed at least six hundred dollars. He gets to play against Vortex, who is kind of the defending champion. He won this time last year. Yeah, uh, he won. The, he won the previous winter uh, assembly yeah. winter, right? So he won't have to give the trophy back or anything like that. He just gets to you know, add it name on the bottom again if okay. he wins this. But it's just... <laughs> yeah, so we have Vortex and versus Synthetic coming up for the final. Um, we're just going to go to a break while we work out when that's going to be because obviously Assembly is a live LAN event, uh, although we are not there. Um, the guys are going to be playing on the main stage and that main stage is being used for other games such as starcraft and other things like that so we'll see how the schedule lines up and i will let you guys know as soon as i know when that finals is going to happen so stick around guys we'll be back soon <laughs> 